Now, since this is a more special occasion, I decided to step in and make a more proper introduction to this. And for those of you who are wondering, no, this is not going to be like my Cloudy 2 review where throughout this whole review, I'm going to be just in front of the camera just talking about it. No, 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 no. This is going to be like any other review and it will have the same structure. It's only going to be in the beginning and the very end of my review, like you'll see me in front of the camera. But anyways, back onto my intro. Now, for those of you who have watched my videos, like quite frequently, some of you may know that I do not like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. In fact, it's one of those films that always pinches a nerve every time it's brought up, no matter where it is. In fact, throughout this whole time, I've been calling it several different names, from Cloudy with a Chance That This Sucks, The Cancer of Animation, The Disgrace of Animation, and also my arch nemesis in the form of an animated feature. In fact, the sequel, Cloudy 2, is literally one of the worst films I have ever seen, period, and so far has the lowest score ever in my Animats reviews. Now, it could be possible that in future episodes of Animats Classic reviews, there will be some that'll have a lower score than in Cloudy 2, but just in Animats reviews, it's Cloudy 2 with the lowest score so far, and it's going to be very hard to beat that. But, anyways, uh, back on to Cloudy 1. What's actually interesting about Cloudy 1 is that the only thing you know from me is that I say Cloudy sucks. That's it. No major explanations or stuff like that. The most that I've ever explained about Cloudy 1 was in my Cloudy 2 review, and... That's practically it. I never really went down to like the major problems and all that kind of stuff or like go into it in full detail. So not only is this review going to be uh, just like any average review where I look at the strengths and weaknesses and say if it's a good or a bad film, but this will also answer the big question that a lot of people would have. What is my problem with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? So, with that said, this is not going to be a review for the fanboys or for those morons who just want to hear good things about it just for their own self-satisfactory needs. This is a review for those who want to listen and to understand what I have to say about this film. So, what is my problem with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Let's find out. The Story I don't think I'm going to break any hearts when I say that the story isn't the most original piece out there. It's the same old underdog story retold so many times where the main character starts out as a loser, then becomes big because of a thing he did, the thing goes haywire, he's back on the bottom, and now he has to fix the problem to save the day. The problem with the story is that it doesn't really do anything to add into this in order to make it stand out. Instead, it just fills it with dumb cliches and subplots that go absolutely nowhere. That, and trying to throw as many jokes as they can non-stop, which, I will admit, a few did make me chuckle. But the overall humor is just often very lowbrow and not even clever in the first place. However, there are a few things where I could see where the movie is going with. First off, I can see where, at the beginning, they try to set up a more silly tone of the premise of raining food by making Swallow Falls an island where people only eat nothing but sardines. It makes sense, and it does help with the setup of the movie's main presentation. Another thing that is kind of nice in here is the heart of the movie, which is the subject of a father-son relationship. It puts the movie at a more calmer pace to appreciate how the characters feel about each other. Although, I will say that it almost works. Why almost? Well, like all the subplots here, this has nothing to do with the main story about food falling from the sky. You can literally just take it out and the movie won't be any different. That and adding the father-son relationship plot doesn't change the fact that there are still plenty of other films that already told this story. 
even worse is that many of them did it better. And when you have better options available than this, you're just left with something that's just a case of lazy writing. The Animation Let me start off by saying that there are some things in which the animators did a decent job at. First off, the island of Swallow Falls looks nice as a little town near a pier. A bit generic, but still fine as it is. Also, I cannot deny that the work they did on the food is quite creative, giving out ideas and visuals that come in all shapes and sizes and makes the film really look colorful. But then comes the movie's elephant in the room. The character animation and the character design. Oh, oh my Jesus. Oh my God, dude. I think JonTron said it best here. Oh, oh, are you serious? Is that something that someone who calls himself a professional artist actually made and handed to their boss and the boss went, yeah, that looks good, do that. Where the hell do I even begin with this? Well, I guess I could start with the character design looks like it was entirely done by a brain-damaged chimpanzee. In any other animated feature, an actual character designer who would do his job would make something that would look kind of realistic, yet also artistic at the same time, making something that looks believable, but also something that belongs in its own world. This, however, is something they want to make in order to get fired from their job! I can tell you that no professional artist would ever look at this and think that this is acceptable, let alone for a computer animated movie. Even you, the person who is watching this review, can create a design that looks much more professional than this mess. And if the design wasn't enough, the character animation is the pile of salt to an open wound. It tries way too hard to be so over the top and so spontaneous just to make the audience laugh that it crosses the line and it's not even funny anymore. It's just sad, desperate, disgusting, and it's only appealing to those who enjoy the recent Happy Madison films. I mean, it's practically the same style of humor and as effective. In fact, here, let me show you a little something. You know how I have to go through this entire film? All right, hold on a second. Let me just, here, gonna take this, gonna minimize it as much as I can. Then, oh, and also I gotta take off my glasses so I don't see much, and there. You know when the animation is so bad that you have to not see it in order to watch it. Seriously, this is something that I expect from Video Brinquido, not a big budget animated feature. Even Hoodwink did a better job than this. Like I said, there are a few good things about the animation. But what they did with the characters is why the animators should seriously consider a career change. The characters. Okay, let's see what we got so far. Let's see, we got a very generic story, a hideous animation, uh, what are we missing here? Ah yes, characters that make the viewing experience really painful. I've already mentioned that the writing just sucks, but the thing is that when this happens, it also affects how the characters are, giving out a cast of bland, one-dimensional characters that offer nothing to the film but reasons to hate them. For example, Sam is an obnoxious love interest, Baby Brent is an annoying comic relief, and the mayor is a stupid villain. Speaking of which, the mayor and Flint are the only characters that actually have a purpose in this film. Everyone else is dumb filler and just tools for Flint to work with. However, this does not apply to everyone. Thanks to the father-son scenario, there are a couple of characters that are not only tolerable, but likable as well. With the first one, Earl, although there are times he acts more like a Mexican jumping bean, his heart is in the right place. He tries to set out a good example for his son, and it really shows that he cares about him. In fact, take a look at this scene right here. Happy birthday, son. Dad? This is your day. Go have fun. I love you guys. You're awesome. I love you too, son. Woo! This
This scene alone is truly a heartfelt moment, and you could only wish that there are more scenes like this instead of stupid crap like this. The other character whose heart is in the right place is Flint's dad, Tim Lockwood. Like Earl, he cares about his son, and even if he doesn't want Flint to go out and make his inventions and stuff, that's because he's just concerned about his safety and just wants him to have a more safe and stable life in the family business. But then we have the main and also the worst character of the bunch, Flint Lockwood. Not only is he just a generic inventor character where he just wants to invent because, but also, like this movie, he thinks that anyone who watches this is an idiot. So instead of having actual character development, he rather wants to move around like an erratic wet noodle. Which makes him a combination of all the hateable characters into one, making him stupid, obnoxious, and really annoying. And that's another reason why the heart of this film almost works. Unlike Earl's relationship with his son where it shows the love from both characters, is up to Tim to give out all the heart, while Flint is such a hateable character that he just becomes a lost cause. There's no point in loving one but not the other in order for the movie's heart to work. When the characters are good, they become likable. But when they're bad, they just make the movie insufferable. This is one of those things in life that shouldn't exist Yet it does, and people lost faith in humanity because of it. Although that Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs does have some creativity with food and a bit of heart, it doesn't change the fact that it's a terrible movie with awful writing that delivers a very generic story along with annoying characters, and possibly the worst animation in the history of cinema. If I must make a recommendation, just throw away the movie, that thing shouldn't even be as popular as it is now, and instead, replace it with the original book it was based on. I can guarantee you that this is much more charming and pleasant, and it has something that the movie never did during its production, a professional artist who worked on it. Would this be the worst animated film out there? Not really, I wouldn't say it's as bad as this horrendous sequel or most of the Weinstein films. But if that's the case, would that be the reason why I have a problem with this film? Because it's a bad movie? Well, technically yes, but not quite. The full answer is much more complex. Now, I understand the importance of being different as an animated feature. To stand out from the rest and to offer something no one else would. This is why films like Fantasia and Yellow Submarine are considered some of the greatest films in animation. However, just because a movie is different doesn't mean it's a good thing. Sometimes there is a reason why no one else like Disney or DreamWorks would do that, and Cloudy is the quintessential film that is different in the worst way possible. Why? Well, as you may know, animation is having a very hard time to be seen as a respectable film medium instead of a genre only meant for kids. What this movie is doing is just enforcing that stereotype, making the animation industry look bad by presenting something only little kids with no sense of good quality can easily be distracted to. But what makes it even worse in this case is how people are so forgiving to this film, just by how it is as a dumb kids film and the minor novelties it offered, rather it be the food animation, the small use of respectable actors like Mr. T, Neil Patrick Harris, James Caan, and Bruce Campbell, and the fact that this is the directorial debut of Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who would after rightfully leave Sony Pictures Animation in order to actually make good films for once. And through this positivity and attention, it only gives the general public the idea that all animated films are just dumb cartoons only catered to kids. And what makes this even worse is that Sony Pictures Animation is continuing to enforce this notion with more films that continue the tradition of bad writing and terrible overly cartoony animation. But now with the news that the whole company is moving from LA to Vancouver, let us pray for the industry's sake that this means a fresh start for Sony and that they can forget their wrong notion of that cartoon nonsense. Otherwise, they will eventually slip up and see the same fate as those who previously stood in Vancouver. 
if there will ever be a day when animation would be taken seriously by both the film industry and the general public, then this film should just disappear. Gone in the pit of obscurity that shares with other animated films of the same quality like Legend of Oz, Mars Needs Moms, and Space Chimps. Because like the previously mentioned, this is nothing more than cartoon junk. In fact, as Flint Lockwood himself said it best, This is junk. This is junk. This is junk. And for the junk that it is, the only thing it deserves is the Animat Seal of Garbage! Hey guys, this is Animat, and welcome back! Now, um, the funny thing that I want to mention about this uh, review is that ever since I picked it out of the animation hat, a lot of people have been emailing me not to review this film. To actually, like, pick, pick another movie out of the animation hat and giving me these messages like, You've suffered through Claudie Review, why are you making it even worse with Claudie 1? And all that stuff. I, I just find that kind of hilarious, but, um... If I could be very honest, I, I'm actually very, very happy and finally relieved that I can finally review Claudia with a Chance of Meatballs and have this opportunity to do this. Because um, I've actually been holding this in for a very long time, like ever since I first saw the movie in preparation for the sequel. And now that I finally did this video, I finally said what I have to say, and said how I feel about this movie and all that stuff and finally put it all together and put it in this one big video for everyone to watch and to listen to. That is if the people are willing to listen and not be idiots on the keyboard going, Screw you, I like this movie, you are wrong! <laughs> but alright, but uh, anyways, uh, another thing that I want to mention is that is everybody who's gonna watch this think that I am right about this movie? Not really, no. Is everybody who watches this video think will agree with me about this movie? Well, not really, no. Well, th that's the thing with uh, reviews and stuff like that. Not everyone is going to agree with what I have to say no matter what film it is. Rather it be a great film like Frozen or a terrible movie like Legend of Oz. But the thing is, is that the only thing I ask from you guys from this review it's just to understand me. Now, not just understand the big picture and just think that Animat says Cloudy sucks and he gives it the Animat seal of garbage. No, 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 not that. It's to understand everything that I said in this review. Why is the, sto the story lazy? Why does the animation not work? Why are the some of the characters annoying? And even some of the good things. Why does the heart of the movie almost work? Why are characters like Earl and Tim such great characters in this? A and all that kind of stuff. A and, you know, if I can manage to have at least one person to actually listen fully to this review and understand everything that I have to say and put it and like make the person think and like put what I say into consideration, then I know that I have succeeded as a film critic. But anyways, now that this is finally over and the franchise is fully dead as it should be, it's time to move on in the next review in the animation hat. And by the way, if you guys have an animated film you would like to, to suggest and I would put in the animation hat, then write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. Alright, so... I have never been this excited to do this again in a while, in a long time, honestly. Okay, oh, there we go, okay. And the next review shall be... Please let it be a good film, please let it be a good film, please let it be a better film at least. What the... Oh, yes, I... F okay, well, I got what I ask. Oh my god, this is actually one of my most requested reviews, actually. Well... It's time to go down in a little town, and honestly, this is actually 
like one of the very few animated films in which that is based on a TV show, but is also considered one of the greatest animated films of all times.